Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. Well, connectivity with Southeast Asia is the new buzz in the Northeast. Air links with capitals of neighboring nations seems to be the key talking point. First, Bhutan's national carrier Drew Care connects Paro with Guwahati and then flies direct to Singapore twice a week. A private airline from Nepal then connects Kathmandu with Guwahati. On the 1st of July, budget airline SpiceJet had its inaugural flight from Guwahati to Dhaka, which is going to be a daily flight in the Guwahati, Dhaka, Guwahati sector. Then in the pipeline, I flights from Guwahati to Bangkok, Hanoi, Singapore, and Kuala Lumpur. Question is, has the Actis policy suddenly got operational? Is Actis policy only about connectivity by air, road, and rail? After connectivity, what next? What are we in the Northeast doing to get tourists attracted to our region? Do we have a tourism infrastructure in place? What about promotion of our region in our neighborhood? Trade and business is a key component of the Actis policy, but what are we going to trade in or export through our road, rail, and air linkages? Are we preparing our potential businessmen in foreign trade practices? Is there anyone ready to do a hand-holding job? Or are we only going to have food festivals and fashion shows without anything concrete, really? Are we then actually excited about the actist policy? Well, to discuss the prospects and challenges on reaping benefits of the actist policy, I have with me Professor Gautam Barwa, Director of the Indian Institute of Information Technology, Guwahati, I am also joined by Dr. Bhupati Das, a technocrat and president of the Center for Development and Peace Studies, a leading think tank, former MD of Numaliga Refinery Limited. From Shillong, I am joined by Ms. Patricia Mukim, editor of the Shillong Times. I have with me Mr. R.S. Josi, former president of FINA. Professor Rajin Singh Lashram from Manipur University joins me from Imphal. And also in the studio with me is Mr. Moyur Bora, writer and commentator, and Mr. Bidyananda Borkotaki, a tea planter, former vice chairman of the Tea Board of India, and currently advisor of the Northeast Tea Association. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Northeast tonight. Are we really excited about Actis policy? Is it only about air link cases? Uh, Patricia Mukim, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's more about many people from this region going out on, uh, you know, tourist visits to those uh, Southeast Asian countries because a lot of people now have disposable <coughs> income and it's also cheaper to fly to Bangkok and beyond than to fly to Delhi and to Bombay. You know, the connectivity towards Southeast Asia is much better for us from the Northeast than it is to the rest of the country. Now, that having said, I think we need to do a study of, you know, what is the cross uh, sort of uh, population that is coming from there to here right. on tourism purposes. Of course, okay. when we say tourism, I also mean medical tourism, etc., cultural tourism. Uh, this place is full of culture. This place also has some good uh, medical facilities. And a part of that had already been going on between Myanmar and uh, Manipur. So All right. we need to increase these sort of uh, cross linkages. Cross linkages. Hold on, uh, Patricia Mukhe. Okay, welcome to you. Professor Gautam Barwa, is Actis policy only about connectivity? <clears throat> now, the question is, many are asking this question. A lot of people are euphoric. A lot of people are not. The question is, people are asking, okay, we have the air links in place. And very soon, we'll have the roads and rail linkages perhaps in place as well. But are we going to only, is it only going to be a movement of a few plane loads of people once or twice a week? Is it all about that? Is Actis policy all about that? What about trade and business? Are we getting ready to take advantage of this? Do we have an entrepreneurial class which is being traded in foreign trade practices? Uh, are you excited? Are you not? I think the air connectivity that has started is a very good uh, beginning for improving the connectivity. So we must remember this uh, Lucas policy, now Actis policy, has been around for a number of years. In fact, the main focus of this, of the Lucas policy at least, was of improving the shipping connectivity from India to the Southeast Asia, in, improve, building more harbors, expanding the harbors, existing ones. 
you see, building roads and railways across the land yeah. is much more expensive. Yes. And so it has taken time. And I think, therefore, uh, the air connectivity is a cheaper option and it's a good beginning. And of course, as you said, it's, this is only the connectivity by itself is not going to be enough. Uh, we are going to have to talk about what we're going to do with it besides tourism. Uh, how, what about commerce? Uh, there are lots of possibilities. And I think as we go along, we, we can discuss lots, this. Lots of possibilities. Uh, Dr. B.K. Das, how do you look at it? What is it all about? Actis policy? How can really Northeast take advantage of this? Is it? It's certainly not about... Now, Now all these years, if you look at the Donna Ministry, they're busy in uh, you know financing uh, fashion shows, food festivals, and some of these extravaganza. But the question is, Actis policy is much more... Are we ready for it? Yeah, I think uh, Actis policy is a quantum jump from what the Lucas policy was. Because of two reasons. One is that Northeast is actually, as it is connected to the Southeastern, uh, Southeast Asia, yeah. uh, it, was, it, it was connected when the Lucas policy was there, it was connected when the Actis policy is there. But now what happens, the government's attention has been into this uh, sector, into this area, much more than earlier because of two reasons. One is we need trade because this is a huge economy. Yeah. $2.6 million economy is and with our $2.4 million, it's a $5 million economy, both combined. So the business has to go in there because you have to take advantage of this very big economy. But what we need, whether Northeast wants or not, government of India has to, because of security and strategic reasons, had to look into this area because China is surrounding us. China has built a, uh, built a All port right. in, All port right. in we uh, will... uh, port in Pakistan, build a port in They Sri control Lanka, the ports in Sri Lanka. The Hambantota port is Sri run by the Chinese. And now Myanmar, Kyukpi port. So we are surrounded by this... Uh, Chinese influence. So you're saying that Actis, to actually operationalize the Actis is all the more important for India exactly, now. That exactly, exactly. Uh, Bidyanandu uh, you, you, you have been touring in this region. Are you excited about what is going on or do you think we have not really uh, uh, done the basics? Our basics are not yet in place. Would you agree to this assessment? Yeah, uh, I am uh, very excited and uh, uh, you are right, uh, the basics are still not in place. But uh, I, I, being from the tea industry, I am so excited because uh, this tea industry can take great advantage of this uh, Actis policy. Yeah. Uh, because of two reasons. One is that uh, uh, most of the uh, Southeast uh, Asian countries, they do not grow tea. So we have a uh, good option to uh, export teas to those countries. And secondly, we can bring uh, tourists for tea tourism because I'm sure uh, those countries, because I visited uh, most of these countries, yeah. and uh, uh, they will be really excited to come to for our tea tourism. Tea so, tourism. Tea tourism. So, so tea tourism, uh, uh, bringing uh, people from there and exporting our teas to those countries, um, uh, it can, yeah, I think it's a great advantage uh, for Assam. And, uh, all right. Yeah, things All are right. not in So, so tea export, tea tourism, these are the two potentials that you are looking at. I'm coming to you right now. Uh, uh, in a minute, uh, Rajan Singh, Lashram, and Mr. Arad Josie, Moirbara, how do you look at it? See, I'm neither very ecstatic nor very cynical about the whole process because after a long, long time, despite being extremely cynical about some of the initiatives taken by central government over the years in respect of North East, yeah. now I think gradually they are inching towards putting in place some sort of physical infrastructure. But my main worry is that all the time if you keep on harping on the government's role, what is the role of the civil society? Do you have in place attitudinal architecture of the local people because entrepreneurial skills and management and some sort of customer friendliness. If those things in a place which are very, lot of organizations are there, many people we know it's a politically, if one tries to be politically correct, they will not say, but people are after easy money, some of the youth. Yeah. If we can, if we can really uh, deflect them from this sort of entrepreneurial activities yeah. with Skill India and other kind of projects, then I think beautiful blending of government of India's physical architect uh, infrastructure and the attitudinal architecture, if you can slowly build, so, I think we so can see some results and some of the, the just demands mm -hmm. of the northeastern region can be, can be addressed in the times to come. Right. 
Uh, I'm coming to R.S. Joshi last to give a broad overview from the industry point of view. But Professor Rajin Singh Lestram, you have been studying the Lucas policy. You have been traveling in Myanmar and China and all these places uh, uh, as part of your research work. Uh, Professor, how, how are you looking at it? What is it that the government should focus on? We are, most of the people will be happy that air links are in place. Uh, we welcome that. You know, air linkages are very important, but what, according to you, are the basics that the government should look into? Yeah, for me, if I look back uh, to the whole process of air gas policy and uh, uh, look is, I feel uh, we need to have a kind of collective kind of interest because uh, there has been a disjoint among the states of Northeast India. We have not been able to articulate our interests for example, Manipur knows our interests quite well, and we are ignoring about what is Assam's interest. So keeping that in mind, I think we need to have a collective interest, both from the political uh, institutions and from the intellectual side, as well as civil society and entrepreneurs. Okay. All right. I'm coming to you. Uh, Mr. R.S. Joshi, uh, you have been, until recently, uh, heading one of the most important trade and industry bodies of the Northeast that's called uh, FINA, Federation of Industries in Northeastern Region. My question is, is it's always easy to blame the government. What about the industry sector? What about the corporate sector? Do you think the corporate sector had failed the Northeast? Because a couple of years ago, uh, Mr. Ratan Tata was on one other program with me. He said that the co Indian corporate, India Inc., has actually failed the Northeast. My question is, has the trade and industry bodies, has the corporate sector done enough of homework to take advantage of the activist policy? At the end of the day, who is responsible to build the entrepreneurial class, provide the necessary tra training in export and import, uh, hand-holding exercise? Who is responsible for this? How prepared are you to take advantage once? Now the air links are slowly in place, Tomorrow, who knows, the road and rail linkage will be fully operational. Let me just be blunt. See, when this started, Lukist policy, way back in 1991, when P.V. Narsimha Rao was the Prime Minister of India, yeah. we came to know about this term Lukist policy formally. All these years, virtually nothing happened till 2014, when the name was changed to... Uh, Actist policy. Actist policy. Yes. Things slowly moved. Still, see, we have not been taking the policy in totality. Everybody has to play its role. Physical infrastructure has got its own role. See, we have not taken our neighboring countries on board. This is very, very vital thing. Another thing, the industry has to be first comfortable domestically. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Yeah. A another thing, see, the time has changed. Investment and capital would not come on its own in this region. We have to create the in enabling environment for that, and that has unfortunately not happened. So these are there are something. There is a good potential. What we need to start to start with, we need to restore the traditional centuries-old way of doing business with our neighboring countries. I mean, like now, you know, how long can we talk about potential? And when we talk about centuries-old practices, are you talking about barter trade? We centuries-old, we had barter trade. So what are you actually trying to you suggest? See, we need to give a boost to the composite culture. Yes, we are together. When we join hand with our neighboring countries, then things make good for the. Uh, better uh, cross-border trade, that, mm -hmm. is, that is one thing. Right. Another now, thing, so far particularly this cross-border trade is concerned, yeah. virtually there is no physical incentive in place. No physical incentive place. Yes. Uh, we, 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 I have a pointed question for him. You said you want to be very blunt, but you are not saying why the domestic industry is not very comfortable in the region. See, you have to spell out now, the time see, has come. See, see, you have to say that what are the reasons for see, your discomfort. See, see, one thing is there is no level playing field. Now a company in this part of region and in the most advanced state of the country, they have the same things in place, virtually nothing. We had a policy, unfortunately, that could not be implemented in later and spirit in this part of country. So we could not take advantage of the policy when the first generation entrepreneurs of this region, they started realizing the potential of that policy, that policy was just out. Okay. 
Okay. Correct. Okay. Now, now, Patricia Mukim, how long can we talk about our potential? Now, the issue is we have been we have to capitalize on some of the natural resources or, or for which the Northeast is known for. Bamboo is one of them. How long? Can, how long can a single farmer from Karbi Anglong or Meghalaya export ginger or turmeric? Uh, a few. He that may be enough for that particular uh, entrepreneur. You require. You have to. You have to overcome lot of odds. To even export a small packet, a small package of uh, you know your own farm products. So my question is, when we are talking about serious trade and business, Bidanand Bhattacharya and Professor Gautam Borwa would bear me out. You have to talk about a certain volume. Now, do we have a means so, to uh, uh, extract and mass produce value add? What about value addition? Our packaging is extremely poor, even if we are the best of organic material. No. Uh, uh, was bit i don't want to be populist here uh, i also, i first want to ask this question is the act east policy vis-a-vis -vis the north east about security because if you look at that kaladan multinodal uh, project it wasn't meant to be for trade and commerce at all it was meant as a security uh, buffer you know and then uh, if we look at the China, uh, sorry, at the India ASEAN trade of 2016-17, it was to the tune of 71.6 billion dollars. How much of that actually was with the Northeast, and how much is it with Eastern India? Because a lot of that, a lot of the trade goes through Eastern Indian ports to the Southeast Asian countries. Now, do we even have a strategic think tank? You spoke about turmeric. You spoke about ginger. Now. Uh, who is going to do the thinking as to what is our no, niche, what it, are our niche but, products? But what, 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 I can't understand. I can't understand. It is, there is no time to think. There is time to act as the name of the whole uh, policy. No, you uh, can't uh, act without thinking, which is no, why no, we I are mean, not how, how, how much we time are, are you prepared to, to How much time are you prepared to give to the uh, Netas and the Babus and uh, everybody to think? You know, and they have been thinking since no, 1990. No, no, this is, this when is the, not for the Netas and why is, there, they, why is there no pressure from the civil society and the government to do something? Nobody is showing the no, way. where is the civil society? Where is civil society? Which civil society are you speaking out? Are, we, aren't we not we all part of the civil that society? Has just emerged from conflict. No, no, this is a region that has just emerged out of conflict. It's a very fragmented region. So, to, to really get into the, you know, the crux of trade so and Professor commerce, Gordon Borwa, you where have to does, be... According to you, does the problem lie? Uh, we, have, we have seen the discourse. We have, how long can we talk about potential? Now, uh, the other day, we were, we were engaged in an in a academic exercise. There was a seminar where a top representative of the government of Assam says that actist policy, Assam is the only state that has a department of actist policy affairs department. Uh, and they are saying that bamboo is something where the focus will be because that is where we are going to leverage uh, making bamboo wood and export. Mm -hmm. But... These are very nice things to talk about. We have been we have been hearing about dredging the Brahmaputra and you know boats plying ships plying and there will be tremendous amount of uh, movement on the on the on the national waterways through the Brahmaputra and the Barak system connected with Chittagong. You have the railway line from Lamding then Akhaura and it's only 25 kilometers stretch which India is now building within Bangladesh to make the railway line through to Chittagong. That was the railway line used by the British to export the tea. I mean, like, fine, we ha suppose we have all this, what are we going to export and what are we going to import on these systems in place? That is my main question. Can you give an answer to that? Yeah, I think as I said, you know, this having this air connectivity ha has, uh, is going to give a boost because in order to have trade, you've got to have human contact. And I think this, these air uh, flights are going to allow our people from here to go to Bangkok, Singapore, Hanoi, and other places and create, explore ideas uh, not only explore ideas create contacts and i think there are lots of things which you are already doing can be then traded there for example the talk about tea what we should do now is to see that okay these southeast asian countries have green tea so we must focus on green tea export over there make green tea cheaper than what is coming from china we've got this silk you know our eri and muga instead of making saris we should start thinking of making sarongs or the dresses that are worn in Hanoi. That is the point. And no. then we'll, we'll that get is, that is a very good point with, going. That is a very good point with so, Professor Gautam Barwa is saying. But my next question on that, from that, I would like to ask uh, uh, Mr. B.K. Das this question. Now, has anybody done a market survey 
do we have the infrastructure in place to manufacture these uh, you know customized things <coughs> which the people in that uh, part of the region are going to actually wear are we going to export the raw material that is the textiles or are we going to export ready made products because bangladesh is today all the international brands whether it is bestseller group whether it is vero moda whether it is uh, jack and johns or whether it is only whether it is selected all this max and spencer all these things are made in bangladesh uh, you know multi story buildings where thousands of workers are making all this stuff they have the finished products there is quality control and so on but do we we don't have as as yeah. those things as yet in assam correct we don't have a clear cut idea what is required there. yes uh, I, we know that it's a big economy 2.6 million uh, billion uh, uh, dollars economy only uh, market survey that i know of is in the oil sector only we have traced out the uh, myanmar bangladesh and all but there the demand is low uh, demand is not much so uh, that is not going to give us a lot of money but the pro my problem is that we are excited say this side of the border is excited about southeast asian uh, economy and yeah. the marketing to that other side of the border are those people equally excited about being connected to this that is the point that is the point, that is, the point. Uh, that i have is another very, thing that to is say a very good point i have another uh, thing to say to, sustain, to... <laughs> to substantiate my point yeah. you said a lot of natural gas is coming out say uh, myanmar you see uh, china has got the, all the natural gas out for next 30 years whether we okay. got left behind absolutely so, so we have to look uh, we have to look at both sides. I have to. I have to go for a very quick break. But before that, yeah. uh, Rajan Singh Leshram, uh, Doctor B K Das has asked a very question. We are excited about the activist policy, but what about the neighboring countries? What is the level of excitement on their part towards exactly. us? Uh, and what are we doing to get them attracted to our region and our resources, Rajan? I think uh, in that context, I think Myanmar and Thailand, they have shown a lot of interest in Northeast India. And uh, there, has been, there have been a lot of visits from uh, different uh, categories of uh, people from Myanmar as well as uh, Thailand. And uh, one area where we can cooperate, I think we cannot, I think on our own, uh, make Northeast India competitive. I think some collaborative work may be a good beginning. Like for example, you talk about bamboo processing. Yeah. Uh, some entrepreneur in Manipur, they have started tissue culture along with uh, some uh, entrepreneurs from Myanmar. Yes. Similarly, uh, and uh, yes. Yeah, but yes, uh, some uh, entrepreneurs are doing, that is what I said. But that killer instinct to take advantage of a policy is, there is no mass movement, there is no movement, large scale movement uh, that is seen. That is what is a cause for worry. On this note, I go for a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, uh, Mr. R.S. Joshi. Now, what are the gaps? Uh, you see, some entrepreneur on their own individual initiative, because there are, there are different kinds of people. Some people have extra initiatives, some people have not. But if you want to take advantage of a policy which is already in place, we have to, we have to prepare. We cannot wait. We have been waiting for the last 30 years or 40 years for the roads and railways to be in place. Now suddenly we find that air connectivity has become a reality which we never thought that there will be a direct flight to Singapore. We never thought there will be a direct flight to uh, uh, direct flight to Dhaka. Now on the first week of August, uh, our chief minister is going to kick off the direct flight to Bangkok from Guwahati. Then it's coming to Hanoi and Kuala Lumpur. People are thinking whether it should be Kuala Lumpur or whether it should be Kunming. By the way, there are 200 international flights which take off every day from Kunming, which is uh, only about uh, uh, you know 55 minutes from Dibruger. So, uh, Mr. R.S. Josie, what preparation? Why is the industry bodies not been able to prepare themselves? Why is it only dependent on the government? I'm not asking you to set up industries. I'm only asking you to train up 100 people. See, skill development is taking place in the region at a very big scale. Another thing I would like to make that uh, once this trilateral 
uh, highway is functional, yeah. in a year or so, things would start moving. Absolutely no doubt about it. It is much economier, uh, economical than the air connectivity. Air connectivity has got its own advantage. But once this trilateral connecting Myanmar and uh, <coughs> uh, rest of the Southeast Asia, mm. so then things would change for good. My one submission will be, let this value addition happen. It's not that only we export. Yeah. We can import as well, provided we do enough uh, value addition no. in this part of country. Yeah, import. Only then, you see, uh, yeah, provided you do value addition. Uh, now, uh, you know, Bidana the Bogotuki, now, the, uh, you see, issue is, what, have we identified our core strengths as far as resources are concerned? You know, say, say I mean, small way, things are happening. Some, some uh, you know, entrepreneurs who have the imagination, they're doing well. But I'm not talking about those few. If you take the Northeast, there may be 100 entrepreneurs in the Northeast who may be doing well. There are a few entrepreneurs uh, from Arunachal Pradesh who are, you know it better, who are selling tea at a very, very high, high rate abroad. But those are fine. But I'm talking about uh, some kind of visibility on the ground. See, so Wasbir, uh, we can take advantage, Assam or Northeast uh, as a whole can take advantage in two ways. One, it can be a manufacturing hub. And second, it can be a trading hub. Both way we can uh, take advantage. So as uh, just now I have uh, I have come to know from you, there is a department in government of Assam, Actis Policy. No, you didn't know? We don't know. We it's are, called we are, the Department are, we, of Actis Policy Affairs Department, we, headed by an additional chief secretary. secretary. So I am very active in all these matters. I don't know till now. So we, uh, uh, as far as T is concerned, we are, we are ready, in fact. So they need to handhold us. And uh, like you have said, like uh, we can uh, export ginger, lemon, etc. So we have extra land. So the government of Assam should first approach us because we are, as a manufacturer, we are ready. We, they need to so handhold us. They need handle. to tell us so how to. So Moyurbora, this is a very, see, uh, we, have, we have a person here who is in part of the industry himself. He is a planter. He is the advisor of the Northeast Tea Association. He was the former vice chairman of the Tea Board of India. He was associated with. Uh, uh, you know, Assam Tea Planters Association and so on and so forth. But when he, a person like him says that he's not aware, that means something is terribly wrong. Terribly we wrong. have a department, I, yeah, we have yeah. a Actis Policy Affairs Department not headed by a director or somebody, headed by a additional. top official, additional chief secretary rank. What more can you expect? What does it mean? What is the moral of the story? No, the moral of the story is I fail to understand. I'm intrigued by the fact that every day government of Assam comes up with the full page advertisement in all the papers. I think that also they, this is one of the beautiful way of popularizing any new initiative they have taken. And recently when the flight for Dhaka took off, at that time also they could have really advertised about that. But having said that about manufacturing gaps, Wasbir, I would like to say one thing. Government of India, whether the present government, even the past government, they had three, four schemes which the people of Northeastern region for different reasons have failed to take benefit. For agriculture, marketing, sorting, grading and infrastructure, Government of India used to give 33% subsidy for all entrepreneurs in Northeastern region. For establishment of coal storages, for rural go-downs. But our people fail to take advantage of the fact. But it is not only the people is to be blamed for coal storage. You yeah. need uninterrupted power supply. But in most of the places, the power supply is all erratic. So if you want everything to fall together, I think the physical infrastructure part, that is to be done by the state government. I think has to be first come to a certain stage okay. but at the same time we must try to okay. build the entrepreneurial abilities of the youth because without them we cannot make it a success without the people to people contact to be buttressed by economic factors okay now now uh, now uh, patricia mukim uh, you know we have been talking about people to people contact but the issue is you need a private university in meghalaya to take the initiative to take a group of 25 to 30 vice chancellors, uh, uh, you know, few vice chancellors from Northeast and have a meeting in Silet, that you require a private university from Meghalaya to take this initiative. Go across the border, you take, go in a bus, cross the Dauki border, go to Silet. You are there in about uh, two to three hours from Shillong. Exactly. And, it, and what is the government doing? We are talking about people to people contact. Uh, you know, there, there are no students in the Northeastern universities from any of the neighboring countries. What's going on? Who is responsible for this? No, no. See, we cannot, like you yourself said earlier, the government cannot do everything. 
there is there are different institutions in this country in this region that have to put in their share of effort so martin luther christian university recently reached out to bangladesh because they want to collaborate no, it is the in UST, terms of USTM, uh, you know, USTM. yeah oh, USTM. okay no but okay that uh, that university took the initiative but other universities from here as well went there and participated uh, and I must tell you that Martin Luther University from here had already got students from Myanmar, you know. They had been having students from Myanmar who, who've come here to study English, to study sociology. Yeah. Then I think there are some students in Nehu as well. <clears throat> so my point is that institutions have to make the effort. But let me come to the, the, the question of entrepreneurs. Now, entrepreneurs will look, look at their own profits. Right. If they're going to make profits, they're going to get into that trade. Now, how do we ensure that they make profits? And mind you, uh, Wasbir, we are competing with China. We have to bear That's that exactly. in mind all the time. China's trade with ASEAN is like $452 billion, which is nothing compared to India's trade with ASEAN. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Professor, Professor what Gautaburo, are we uh, really... We are not really... I think uh, Patricia Mukim has done a, made a very important point that we must not forget the fact that activist policy can act as a counter hedging strategy to to contain uh, the, the the encirclement policy that China is adopting. We are already being encircled in various ways, whether it is the economic sphere, whether it is the uh, social sphere, and so on, and even the cultural sphere. The the, the amount of uh, investment the Chinese are now making in Bangladesh, uh, you know, that is a cause. Uh, for serious concern, I think, uh, and Myanmar as well. Yeah, so I think, of course, we have to worry about China, but I think uh, we have to get our act together yes. also. And just to take on, on the um, education thing, I think there's a lot of scope in higher education to get students uh, from at least the lesser developed ASEAN countries like Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. And I think uh, education issues like IITs, Guwahati University, Nehu, uh, they can do a lot. They can get many students to come and study here because much cheaper. They will be competing with, say, Singapore. You know, it will be much cheaper to come to Guwahati than to go to Singapore to study for a student in Hanoi. And that's what we must also try to, you know, leverage. And I think this USTM initiative in Bangladesh is only a small first step. Absolutely. We must go to Absolutely. Myanmar. Hanoi, Laos in a big way. Now, now, Professor Rajan Singh Leshram, uh, uh, Rajan Singh Leshram, you had said that, you know, there are a lot of students from uh, Myanmar and other places actually willing to come provided, uh, you know, they get a scholarship and some subsidies on the Indian side. Do you think uh, it is time uh, some mechanism has to be put in place? Yes, absolutely. I think this is an area where our government, as a part of the Act East policy, uh, can provide some scholarship, particularly uh, Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Because Thailand, their economic position is much better, and they are, in fact, willing to come on their own scholarship. Because we are receiving a lot of uh, inquiry about PhD program in Manipur University. So keeping that in mind, I think some uh, uh, a, a, a scholarship for these uh, CLMB countries, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, can do well for our ethics policy. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. B.K. Das, uh, you know, I'm coming to, I'm taking you to a very, very different aspect. Your center, your research center, that is the Center for Development and Peace Studies, recently did a study where the finding was very unique in the sense that those tribes, those small tribes, which are also found immediately across our India's borders, like the Thai group of languages, they are on the verge of extinction. Uh, where there is a particular community called Thai Khamyang, which has got about 5,000 population in Assam and another 2,000 in Arunachal Pradesh, a total population of 7,000. Uh, the, the study, according to uh, your uh, finding, it is that out of this 5,000 and some only 25 people are able to speak the language, out of which only two people, two to four people in the proper accent. Do you think all these things should come under the activist policy? Because unless you bring teachers, unless you bring fully, you know, assistance from outside, the proper people who can actually uh, train them in their languages, they will totally become extinct. Yeah, I think this study has very clearly brought out that some of the languages which are traditionally spoken 
in this area and where those kind of people are there across the border yeah. because we must talk about the affinity and commonality in languages, cultures, attires, cuisines and even living style. So we must also ensure that the languages like the, this 25 people only speaking this language out of which only two people yeah. with proper intonation diction and out of 25 only 10 of them can write. So it is only and once this gen and their children are studying all in English schools now, English medium school. So unless we take a concerted effort, <coughs> these languages will die down. And so we need to, before it happens, we need to see that some kind of a mechanism to transport this knowledge into the next generation or into also in the archives and all through digitization. You see, there are a lot of, uh, lot of uh, initiatives that we have outlined for the government to have a look at it and see what can be done. But secondly, my most important point is that maybe you know, uh, the flow will be there in education mm -hmm. and more importantly in healthcare. healthcare. Healthcare, because we already have 10 good hospitals here today and more and more hospitals will come, maybe in healthcare because it will be cheaper to, and even in tourism, even for pilgrimage, if not for anything else, the tourism will be there. But we don't want to be in this prosperity. We don't want to be a corridor, not as. We want to be the hub of the economic activities. And the most important thing that okay. we should do yeah. is in the hydrocarbon sector, because the, all the offshore explorations are happening now. There's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm in the offshore activities in the Southeast Asian countries for very, for very good reasons. Because Japan is becoming the hub of all these activities in the hydrocarbon track. We necessarily have to look at some big things, small things, isolated things are happening. It will also can be connected up, but we need to look at some big, big fishes. Uh, Mr. Josie? Yeah. Oh, one thing I would, I, I, I would like to share with you when I mentioned that we need to be comfortable domestically. See, ease of doing business is one thing where I would like to just uh, air my views. We, the most advanced state of the region, that is Assam, happens to be at 23rd in our country. And I don't think there is a much change uh, so okay. far this is of doing business is concerned. So we need to improve domestically. Another thing I would like that we need to have a uh, industrial corridor at our borders. Land happens to be a biggest problem for we, the industry, we don't find land. And if we find it is too costly to set up uh, a viable unit there. So if the infrastructure is available at uh, border, so it will solve both the problems, activities at border will economically prosperity will result in. Yeah. So that is one thing. And one sector I would like that, that be given a special focus, that is pharma sector. Let it be a hub for pharma sector in this part of country so that there is a market for across the border and we can feed the rest of the country when we can export to US and other countries. Why not through Southeast Asia? Now, uh, Moir Bora, yeah. uh, the other day, other day, a very senior officer, uh, you know, involved in this activist policy was saying, we always talk about connectivity, but that is a wrong concept. We have to talk about reconnecting okay. because we already had the existing routes. We, we had the road linkages, we had the river linkages, and we had the rail linkages. So particular mention was talked about was the river linkages and the rail linkage. Uh, through Tripura, that uh, Akhaura to Chittagong uh, is just about 25 kilometers. Uh, you know, it's that close. So all we have to do is to that Lamding, Lamding Agatala link, and then Agatala to, through Akhaura to that to Chittagong, and you have the whole access to the sea. Chittagong uh, port. Chittagong port. port. Now the issue is, the issue is, we are now also building the city port that is giving you another access to the sea. Uh, but is it as simple as that? Because a lot of people are saying, oh, don't open the steel well road because the Chinese might come in. So that bad road means it's uh, it's uh, it's acting as our defense mechanism. So these are outdated concepts today's, in today's uh, geopolitics. Absolutely. Absolutely, in today's geopolitics. And first of all, like the uh, the official you are talking about, I will I will invoke Shakespeare. <laughs> what's in a name? Whether you call it connectivity or reconnectivity, that has to be ensured. And with then only, which we have been loudly lamenting about the Northeast India or Assam, particularly before independence, had a beautiful connection with Sitagong and all. But after independence, suddenly because of the geopolitical uh, 
uh, whatever history happened yeah. because of that we have become landlocked. Yeah. But now since whether you call it reconnection and all it has to be done and what Mr. Zussi was also telling and uh, Mr. Das was hinting at some time back, the Actis policy has to be a very very comprehensive all encompassing thing and it has ultimately to be backed by economic prosperity That's and right. some kind of hub and manufacturing sector in the region. Okay. And for that I have been really talking about our youth have to be made ready for that, that entrepreneurial management, customer yes. friendliness, so patients, we have to prepare all those class. Class. Yes, yes, we, we have, have to prepare problem. a class. We, 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 Otherwise, we people will not benefit. Absolutely. We have to prepare that mentality among our youngsters right from the, right from the, maybe the college level at least. Yeah, Vajbir, I keep on going to Delhi and all. So, I know how the policy will be made. So, in policy, everything will be there. But we have to prepare ourselves, as you have rightly said. Otherwise, what will happen, it will be just a flyover. Uh, uh, that it will be uh, flyover in a corridor in uh, the northeast people will not be benefited and uh, that people in sitting in Delhi will not come and uh, handhold us. It is the state governments, all the state governments of eight states, they have to handhold their own people they, and uh, uh, if we have a department here for access policy that that department should immediately call a meeting. There is no time in hand because the uh, policy, active policy central government will make and it will it will come and uh, there will be a lot of things, but we will not be able to take advantage of it, uh, that because if we T people, we are already ready say, with manufacturing. If they do not handle us, they do not tell us how to uh, do uh, value addition, packaging, marketing. So if we are not ready with that, we will not be able to take advantage of So I, I So I, Patricia Mukim, what is the road ahead according to you? What is the best thing to do right now? One, two, three thing to do is that India is very good with its soft power. We should use that soft power. We are very strong in the in the IT sector and all. And we should use that soft power in those countries because they need it. Uh, Japan is using a lot of that soft power in the Northeast. They are funding a lot of projects, uh, educational projects right. and all that, you know. Uh, archiving stuff and all. So I think we should also learn to push ourselves uh, quietly and not talk big about entrepreneurship as if, you know, as if um, the activist policy is only about trade and commerce. It's it's more than that. It's, it's beyond that. And that is why also we need to have, you spoke about, somebody spoke about having a comprehensive policy. We also have to look at the whole region. We are not even talking about Tripura. Tripura has been um, a very good state in terms of how it's exporting power to Bangladesh. And uh, we don't have anyone from there, so we don't have any voice from there. We don't know what's happening in Nagaland, whether there, an, there is any possibility of any kind of trade links between Nagaland and the rest of uh, Southeast Asian countries. But we know that entrepreneurs from Nagaland are going to the rest of the world. They are showcasing their products to yeah. every part of the world. So uh, also, uh, Wasbir, it's important to strengthen our land custom stations. They are all in a shambles. They are not yet ready for that big jump, you know. No, now, uh, Professor Gautam Borwa, now you see, when we talk about Northeast, we cannot think in isolation. We are a very, very critical part of the country. Uh, as uh, Prime Minister Modi has said, we are the Astha Lakshmi, uh, the eight states. Now the point is, if we are talking today about a $5 trillion economy, uh, where our employment rate has gone to a 45-year low, question is, we have to leverage on every possible part of the country, every possible opportunity that come our way, isn't it? Now, therefore, we have got eight states with 45 million people. If we if we agree to this construct that the northeast of India is the beginning of Southeast Asia, we should not bother about the chicken snake. We may be far away from the mainland, but we have the ASEAN at our doorstep. R.S. Joshi, I'm coming to you. Uh, you know, we have the ASEAN at our doorstep. We have to leverage. On this huge population, uh, uh, you know, we we are at the we are at the neck of ASEAN. Actually, we are at the we are at the mm. mouth of the ASEAN. Uh, don't you think it is time for us to think in a bigger perspective than just talking about the northeast? I think the entire government of India must uh, come to our aid, aid of the northeastern region, because it should be part of their five trillion dollar economy, economy achieving plan. Yeah, I think so. I think the, we in the northeast should also leverage. The, the security part, you know, the government of India is worried about security. And I think we should use that to get government of India to fund more. So maybe it is for them for security, but then once money comes in, roads get built here in, internally, we can take advantage of it 
spot trade with the Southeast Asian. Because I think ultimately investment inside the Northeast is also equally important than just having connectivity. Investment inside the Northeast. Rajan Singh Leshram, uh, what, 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 how do you, do you think, do you think any differently? Rajan, to my question. Uh, no, I think, yeah, please repeat the question. I could not get no, it. No, question is, when we talk about, we see, we, we are a part of this, a part of a great country called India. Uh, when a country, we have got to set a target for ourselves very rightly by the Prime Minister that we have to have a $5 trillion economy by 2025. Now, if we have to achieve that, we have to do whatever possible across the country and Northeast is very important. We have got the full potential because we have 45 million people ourselves plus we have the entire ASEAN at our doorstep. No, I think here, I think it may not be very proper to have a X policy keeping uh, in mind to counter Chinese uh, penetration in Saudi Asia. I didn't say that. Because I think in my... Yeah. I didn't no, say I that. No, I mean, I, I feel that, you know, uh, yeah, it may not be very proper. Like, okay, we can have our own orientation to Saudi Asia under the X policy. Uh, but as I have mentioned in the beginning, uh, first we have to have a coordinated approach in Northeast because uh, in my interaction with uh, stakeholders from Mizoram, Naglen, and to some extent Arunachal, they always feel that there yeah. is a kind of Assam centric <coughs> or Gohati centric. I think this perception needs to be distilled first. And then we need to have an aggregated kind of a collective uh, a, a, po po a point where all the stakeholders from these different states of Northeast India come together. And as you have mentioned, we cannot think in isolation, you know, and there is one. And then uh, you were talking about uh, how, what should be the approach. For me, uh, uh, individual initiative, uh, that is the one, uh, that is the moving force in, in the case of Manipur. I think that needs certain uh, intervention or support from state. Right. I think that can go in the long run. For example, okay. the okay. Impal uh, Mandalay Bangkok <clears throat> flight is uh, scheduled okay. to begin from uh, October. The memorandum has been signed on. This could be an initiative. This was purely private initiative. Private initiative. And in the case of Manipur, everything is purely private initiative. Not, not, not sponsored by the government. In fact, which is not no a bad entrepreneurs thing, are willing to thing work together the with the government. Uh, Patricia Mukim, your concluding remarks. I'm coming to you more. Patricia Mukim, I'm running short of time. Your concluding remarks. See, Wasbir, uh, we have to learn a few things from China. China has done a lot for Kunming. You yourself said that 200 yeah. flights are taking off from Kunming every day. Yeah. Why is India not <clears throat> doing the same for the Northeast? The Northeast is, is supposed to be a Kunming if the, if the government gives it enough attention. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's hope it happens. Uh, Rajesh Joshi, your parting words. See, uh, charity begins at home. Prime Minister has said, ask Lakshmi about the Northeast. Yeah. I would like that all these Ask Lakshmi need to be integrated into one Lakshmi for the purpose of economy of the region. See, we, we at eight, eight sisters doing, moving in our own way, we need to have a collective thought, one Lakshmi. Another thing I would like that to start with, we must remove the internal barriers within the region. This is the ground reality. There is no free movement of goods and service even within the region just uh, yeah, what to speak about, about uh, yeah. across the right. border. So this need to be addressed within ourselves. Nobody okay. else would come. All right. Uh, Professor Gautam Borwa. Yeah, I think I think <coughs> want to end on a positive note saying that I'm very excited that these flights have started, that we'll be able to go to Mandalay and Hanoi very soon. And I think things will start even though in a small way, it's going to pick up and I think in the years to come, we are going to succeed. Absolutely. This air connectivity is uh, on the initiative of Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonwal and his government. I think this is a very, very good initiative, positive initiative to start with. Uh, Dr. B.K. Das, your parting words. Yeah. Uh, air connectivity itself, I only wanted to put a word of caution that the flight should not stop after a month or so. Okay. It has to be sustained, okay. number one. But my w one worry I have is that supposing we get into this uh, area, in a very big way, the people have to accept us. They should not take it, take us as an aggressor, but they should welcome us as a, uh, with a positive intent. So we need to also set up small, small factories, uh, etc., so that we okay. can generate employment for them, yeah. so okay. that they look at. Uh, I only would take one more line. Uh, that you see, we should learn from the Chinese in a way that when Kumlin to uh, Kyakpo uh, uh, pipelines yeah. and I think yeah. they built. 
They yeah. build refineries and in the absolutely, in the absolutely. absolutely, Mr. Bidyananda, yeah. uh, uh, Bidyananda Borka, uh, What are your yeah? I, I congratulate and thank uh, government for uh, taking initiative in connectivity, air connectivity, and hopefully we'll soon have uh, our other connectivities also. But let me tell you, uh, Wasbi, that uh, there is a great potential uh, of export of our tea to China. In China, China, you know, is a uh, the uh, majority of the teas are green tea. But uh, in China now, uh, black tea has become very popular. And Absolutely. We, we Assam, we produce 95% uh, of our teas are black tea. So there is a, I have visited, uh, uh, last two years I visited China and I have seen great potential of our teas export from Assam to China. Okay, last words, Wasbi, real after, last words to yeah, Moyambara. Yeah, after, after a long, long time, we have seen <coughs> symbolic and rhetorical statement given by the central government leaders have been translated into some sort of reality. I congratulate Chief Minister of Assam for flagging of the flight to Dhaka, but right. I want Horbananda Sunwal to meet a coordinated meeting with all the ship ministers in Gohati, we must have to show that we have got the fire in the belly for the Absolutely. economic prosperity. If you want yeah. to really want to achieve the desired kind of success, I think you must start immediately. Uh, immediately. Fire in the, the fire in the belly, that is what is needed in the northeastern region. Somebody has to take the initiative, and why not Sarbananda Sonwal, the chief minister of Assam? On that note, I end this edition of Northeast tonight. I thank all my panelists for participating in this very, very engaging discussion. Good night and goodbye.